The views and opinions expressed on this program do not reflect the company, owners, management, staff, clients, or partners. It's Tuesday, the 20th day of February, 2024. Welcome to Bermuda's Daily Talk Show. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the BAC Group of Companies, Medicals, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. I'm Jamal Hartman, and Maya Palacio will be with you in a bit to bring you the latest in her news break brought to you by People's Pharmacy. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. And, you know, I don't want to, you know, tell Maya's news or anything, but... It's another wet day in Bermuda, huh? It's like Bermuda is a rainforest at this point. Rain, rain, rain. I mean, mind you, I think rain in Bermuda is so much more uh, beneficial. I mean, some places it's just like mudslides and, you know, you don't really understand the benefit uh, of, of it being so often. But we've, we've got to have a chat with Mother Nature. What is she trying to cleanse Bermuda of? Like, what's the issue? Why do we need, well, again, stop complaining, Jamal, because it's better than having a dry, but they call it a drought, better than having a drought. But anyway, happy to everyone. Hope you are staying dry and uh, comfortable today. And uh, uh, Suzanne Ingham says, awesome Tuesday, Jamal Amaya. I can see you better today, Jamal. Lights. Well, again, I, the, the thing was uh, we had to connect the light to the Wi-Fi to work. So my uh, pops, you know, being the electrician he is, we figured that out. Uh, well, Farrah Palacio is beating us. She says, happy Mars Day. So I guess that's our days of the year. She she just gave it to us, folks. Happy Mars Day. Um, we appreciate our producer, side producer, Farrah Palacio, for getting ahead of the game because I definitely had not looked at days of the year as of yet. So thank you to Farrah. But um, yeah, it, it, it is a dry Tuesday. We've got a lot to discuss. Um, obviously, the budget breakfast was yesterday. So I think uh, Maya has uh, some things that she wants. Now, it's pretty hard to do this today, so we, we'll, we'll, we'll speak about it later. But, um, oh, she said Tuesday equals Mars Day. Well, my apologies. I was not aware. So happy Mars Day. All righty. Um, so look, let's let's get into it. Greetings, everyone. Thanks for making us part of your daily routine. A good one today. We're welcoming another Bermudian Olympian, Peter Bromby, on to the show. The daily play is a remember when, so someone will win the opportunity to be eligible. No one won yesterday. So someone will win the opportunity to be eligible for this week's prize, which we give away on Friday. Um, please do not forget, if you haven't already, to subscribe on our website, follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Audience, real quickly, before we get into today's conversation, if you uh, received the email about mailboxes, yes or no, did you have a mailboxes account already? Yes or no? We'd like to know. Yes or no, did you have a mailboxes account already? Yes or no? Let us know. Did you have a mailboxes account already? Yes or no? Because um, quite a few people said that they had mailbox accounts, which... We appreciate, uh, but let us know yes or no. And uh, yeah, see, look, our audience was up. Angeline Butler says yes. Uh, Yolanda Richards says no. Trevor and Charlie said no. All right. Well, Sherry Lynn Johnson says yes. Um, she had one. Uh, Nana Pamela Wade says yes. And um, we've got yes from November when you had the guy on, said Suzanne Ingham. And Manuela John said no longer. All right. Well, 
hopefully, Manuela John and Traveling Trotty and Yolanda Richards, you all can take advantage of that uh, two-year membership on us and uh, get yourself mailboxed. Yeah, yeah, that sounds about right, mailboxed. Look, guys, I don't have a joke for you today. I'm going to be honest with you. I left my joke book. I left my joke cards. So you see, Maya, Maya's like, I'm not coming in early because she thought I had a joke. And just because of that, she don't even know that I don't have my jokes with me. All right. So I think I won that battle. Uh, no joke for you all today. Uh, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know you wanted one. I'm sorry, but we have an important conversation to have. And we can get back to the jokes next week. All right. We'll get back to the jokes next week. But there's something that's been happening. And quite a few people sent it to me um, about one particular small business, which was Dove and Butterfly last week. I'm not sure if you received the information. And then there's some businesses that have been challenged. We've had Malachi Simons on regarding, you know, Just a Farmer. You know, we've seen the uh, Pie Factory and Bermuda Pie Company, two different companies. Uh, I believe Pie Factory, they're taking a, she's taking a break. Bermuda Pie Company, um, you know, they were having challenges. Then you saw yesterday, um, or you may have seen on the front page today, but there's some issues with Mr. Chicken that they're having with the planning department. One of the things in the budget, again, not sure if you read it, heard it, or seen some highlights of it, but one of the things, and uh, you know, Mr. Craig Simmons, who will be coming on this show this Thursday to you know, have a budget recap conversation with us. One of the things that he said was, and he's been saying for years, is that entrepreneurship is going to be the way for Bermuda's economy to bounce back. But one of the things I, I'm, I'm realizing is that so many people who have taken the risk, because entrepreneurship is a risk, are becoming frustrated and, and they're, they, they are having so many challenges in Bermuda. And so I think, first off, I mean, Yes or no? Any, and this is for you, audience. Yes or no? Are you an entrepreneur? Do you have any way that you make legal money? Sorry, legal money. Let me just say legal. Legal money on your own. Do you take a risk? Is anyone out there a, an entrepreneur? Yes or no? Do you consider yourself an entrepreneur? Yes or no? Let us know. Yes or no? Are you an entrepreneur? Just trying to gauge before we jump into the conversation. Is anyone out there a, an entrepreneur? Yes or no? Uh, B. Denise Hollis says no. Um, Auntie S says no. Uh, Yolanda Richards says no. Any any yeses? Anyone out there um, make money on the on their own or take risk? Yes or no? Suzanne Ingham says no. All right. Uh, Sherilyn Johnson says no. All right. Any anyone else? Any any entrepreneurs in the his house? Any yeses? Uh, Farah Palacio says not yet. All right. It's coming. It is coming. Manuela John says no. All right. So. The question of the morning is going to be, what are your thoughts on the challenges small businesses in Bermuda seem to be facing? So there were some challenges. And if I'm not mistaken, I had the story up with the um, with the Mr. Chicken situation is it was about a car port or something like a, um, what's those things called? Miles going to give us more details. Charging station. That's what I think it's called. And then we had. The, uh, I'm, I'm not going to talk about the, I don't want to get into specifics, right? But I just want to say businesses are having challenges and people seem discouraged. What are your thoughts on it? But let's start off with this. Would you, whether you have a business already, would you start a business in Bermuda today based on what you see? Would you start a business in Bermuda today? Yes or no? Based on what's reported, based on what you read, based on what you see, would you start a business in Bermuda today? And let me just make sure no one on Instagram is up in, in the comments because, you know, our friends on, on Insta, they, they, they need love too, folks. So, uh, again, we still don't have any way to in, involve them in the combo. So let's make sure we're not ignoring our friends over on the gram. But would you start a business in Bermuda today, yes or no? Um, 
Hadelian Swan says no. Um, Farah Palacio says no, it looks beyond stressful. Uh, Traveling Trotty says yes. Uh, Yolanda Richard says no. Um, Suzanne Ingham says no. Wow, so let me try and try. Here's what I would say is, if you have the right idea, the work ethic, a strategy, and of course, funding in place, if you can fill a gap or a need, right now is probably a great time to start a business. Now, it also depends on what kind of business. Do you necessarily need to go through hoops or you know, things that require such approval where red tape is possible, right? So if you're, you have an actual uh, storefront, for instance, there's gonna be much more required as you see with the Mr. Chicken situation. Now, I know there's a war of words between government. I mean, I, I saw something this morning on the World Gazette about government being used as a scapegoat with Mr. Chicken. I see the challenges with Dove and Butterfly and government. Um, I Some businesses, it's the cost of doing business in Bermuda. There are challenges to doing business. I'm not going to sit here and act like it's easy. I guess this is a great time to say that uh, Bermuda Communications Group, we are now officially an international company because we are now registered in the United States as a, an official business as well. So for us, um, you know, we are not limiting ourselves anymore to this space, which, you know, when I saw the Dove and Butterfly say, you know, we're, we're leaving. Well, your business doesn't necessarily have to be located where the challenges are, depending on what kind of business you have. But for some, it's necessary, like a restaurant, or you can't be in another jurisdiction to serve people here unless you know you're sending frozen goods over and then people can cook their own mr chicken or or the like but there's going to be challenges in any business would i start a business today my answer would be yes but it depends on so many factors funding the kind of business the gaps or needs that i'm filling right are people you know some people go into business because they have a great idea. I'm sorry, but ideas don't necessarily serve people. <laughs> Is there a need for that idea that you have? I want to say this as well. I think when we have these great business ideas, right, we have to have a certain, I mean, you know, there's a thing called forecasting, and we only seem to use it when it comes to money and finances. But we have to forecast industry as well. We have to actually you know, forecast the, the political aspect of it, right? Uh, at the end of the day, someone said it to me yesterday. I met with a CEO yesterday morning for breakfast. And he said that Bermuda, it's not about who you know. It's about who knows you. Think about that. It's not about who you know. It's about who knows you. And when in business, as sad as it may sound to most of us, it's important that the right people know you. It helps. It's not friends and family. But let me be clear. It's not friends and family I'm getting at. But the more people who know you, and when I say know you, they know your work ethic, your reputation. You know, they, they know how you would add value to the community as a business person. It can help. But there are, way around, there, there are ways around this red tape. And ways around the red tape are strategy. You know, I keep telling people, you know, I only wanted to own a business whereas I didn't need to communicate with the government regularly. We can work with our lawyer to stay within the law of the land to find a way to make a living. But once the government is involved, you can guarantee, guarantee trouble's not far behind. So again, what are your thoughts, audience? What are your thoughts uh, on, and, and 
there's so many other aspects, the, the, the minimum wage, how that impacts small businesses. But what are your thoughts on the challenges small businesses in Bermuda seem to be facing? And there are a lot. There are a lot. What are your thoughts? Like, what do you think these small businesses should do? Do you think they should relocate? Do you think that they should shut up shop? Barra Palacio says, it's very difficult for the alternative creative as well. The arts do not thrive here as much as I like. So far, my question regarding that would be, what can the art, people in the arts, artists do that doesn't require government who may get in the way? What can we do? Like, what can art, people in the arts do together to thrive? What can we do? Manuela John says, is installation of charging stations a new requirement? I was, the first time I heard of it. I mean, Maya will likely have more in the news break, but that was the first time I heard of it. I was, I, I honestly didn't see that coming, Manuela John. I didn't. Kia Vrene BDA says, an online self-improvement done right business might be cheaper to do and then possibly collab with others, sell your products in their store, or to rent at a cheaper price their space for workshops. I love the way you think. You know, I think Kimwana Eve, uh, I forget the name of her business, but she came on, oh, hey, looky, looky. She came on in December, I think, or November. And I like what she did for uh, vendors, right? We live in uh, an internet era, right? And it this kind of strategy right here, let, let's think of a studio. When I went to college, when I was in college, uh, they made us believe that you needed tens of thousands of equipment to do what we do here every morning. Well, if you know Maya Palacio, the thrifter, you don't. You need a certain level of quality. You need a certain level of products to ensure that you're delivering quality for these conversations. But if Times have changed. Times have changed. You don't necessarily need specific qualifications, hundreds of thousands of dollars of equipment to have qual you know, quality conversations. You don't. You need to be well-researched. You need to be engaging and have the ability, the ability to operate new media. But things have changed. I, 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 I am concerned. I don't know about you, audience, but when I think about the challenges small businesses in Bermuda seem to be facing, I am concerned that they're closing. What, do, what does the closure mean? Less jobs. Now, you may say, oh, well, they only had two, three employees. That adds up. It adds up more and more companies and more and more people out of work. You know, the premier, um, David Burt and his, his government keep talking about, you know, these 700 job, construction jobs and all these projects. Audience, do you, yes or no? Have you heard of a hotel called Bahamar in the Bahamas? Anyone know about that? Hotel called Bahamar in the Bahamas? Yes or no? Have you heard of that hotel, Bahamar? Remember that project uh, was, took a while to get done. It took a while to complete, right? And one of the complaints I remember from some Bahamians I knew was that there was a lot of foreign labor on the construction sites. Does anyone ask the questions of the government who these jobs are going to be for? Has anyone asked are Bermudians even trained to do these jobs that are going to be required to build this hotel? Do we have enough Bermudians in the construction space? You know, there's so many questions to ask. And while I believe that entrepreneurship is the way, is the way to go, I believe if we can do the work for someone else, we can do it for ourselves. I believe everyone can. The only difference is 
some aren't interested in taking the risk. And that's okay. That's okay. That is okay. But we must find a way to respond to the challenges of today. I'm not here to give advice to any business owner because I don't understand different industries and all businesses, most businesses. But my hope is that we don't see this trend become worse. We need entrepreneurs. We need job creation. Not just job creation, but job creation that allows people to pay their bills and take care of themselves. Entrepreneurship is the way to go. But it can't just happen because people have great ideas. Suzanne Ingham says, I see way too many small companies struggling. There are customs issues. Yeah, we saw that on the front page yesterday. I know a lady who hasn't received her stuff from December yet. Customs don't want to give it to her. This is controlling. It's a dictatorship. I really feel for these small businesses. I do my best to support them. It's not looking good for small businesses. Audience, before we bring my Palacio in, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like uh, on whatever platform you're tuned in on. Just make sure you give us a like, a love. Um, take two minutes, two seconds. Um, Karen Simmons said she heard of Bahama. Uh, Polly Rich said no, she hadn't. Uh, Far Palacio says, is it a rose? There is a rosewood on the Bahama property. So it's a bunch of hotels. I believe it's a Hyatt, some others, but it's a bunch of hotels. All right, make sure you give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. YouTube, show up, show up, YouTube. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you sign up like Kia, Renee BDA, and Karen Simmons. Make sure you become an official member of the YouTube page. But YouTube, you've got to show up because Facebook's always over here. There's always like 10 times more viewers on YouTube, but 10 times less likes. You all got to show the love over on YouTube. The algorithms are not our friend. Let's bring Maya Palacio and Fidelio on news break. After that, we have Bermuda Olympian Peter Brumby joining us for another conversation with a Bermuda Olympian. Stick with us. Good morning, good morning. Greetings, MP. How are you? Man, there's a lot of news going on right now, Jamal. I'm feeling I'm feeling like just it's a lot. <laughs> oh. Well, this sounds exciting, I think. <laughs> I think. I mean, did you it's have anything about any of the small businesses? After talking and being able to actually speak to a lot of the small businesses in Bermuda, it's definitely been rough um, for many of them. A lot of the same things you might already be hearing just about like the red tape of it all. Um, again, about customs, obviously what you may have read in the Gazette as well. I'm, I'll mention a bit in uh, my news break, but there's also been conversations that I've had with business owners about the same thing when it comes to customs and getting their stuff off the dock and how much it's become a challenge, how it's been very repetitive, how they thought they already dealt with this situation before and then it comes back as the same thing. So there's a lot of that going on right now. And there has been, of course, um, even coming from different businesses or you know private sectors about the good that came out of the budget, but there is a lot to highlight about what is not being said as well or addressed. So okay. it's a lot of that. All right, well, give it to us, MP. This seems like a lot. Yeah. Good morning, good morning, everyone. This is your Daily Hour Newsweek brought to you by People's Pharmacy. Starting out the news, a dispute, frustrations, and what is being called ridiculous. So co-owner of Mr. Chicken alongside his wife, Mr. Ferbert, says that after he received his building permit and the rest of the approval, he was called by someone in the names that he mentioned, and this is coming um, off a video from TNN, by Omar Douglas from Planning, who called and stopped his plans because now they want him to put a charging station at his Heron Bay location. So let's hear it. In a bit and this video from TNN. They said in writing that they want Mr. Chicken to put a vehicle charging station on the property. What for? That is the most ludicrous, ludicrous thing I've ever heard. What other restaurant or any building for that matter that's being constructed, constructed right now has been told they need to put a charge 
for somebody's cause. Why should I bring the expense, my money, to charge somebody's cause? Now, the ministry and the Capitol Office spokesperson did put out a press statement saying that, quote, the Mr. Chicken ownership provided a total misrepresentation of facts tried to portray the Department of Planning as the classic scapegoats. They confirmed more for, sorry, they said more saying that the facts are, this is from their words, the Department of Planning assessed the planning application under the Bermuda Plan 2018. The applied policy is not discretionary and thus cannot be waived. Uh, it requires that when a parking lot involves 10 or more parking spaces, at least one must supply an EV charging station. Now, again, this is from the planning application under Bermuda Plan in 2018. So you could think that it's kind of relatively new and not something that was always stipulated. So it went on to say that the Development Application Board approved the application with the condition that a required charging station be installed before using, sorry, before issuing a certificate of use and occupancy. The permit building permit, the submitted building permit application is currently now underway, they said, and under review. Uh, to that end, the following conditions approval as instructed by the Department of Application Board, the technical officer per responsibility and duty requested this information be included in the drawing. So basically they've halted it, it said, this is what was already in it that you have to kind of abide by. Even though we approved it, you still need to do these stipulations as well. Now, they also said that the parties involved knew of these conditions as early as December 2nd of 2023 when the DAB issued the decisions. Had the information been acted upon, this matter could have been addressed much sooner. And they stated also two options that the owner can take forth. Now, however, in the statement, Mr. Ferbert, stated the following disappointment that he has had with the PLP government, which you may have already heard before, but we're gonna hear it from his words exactly. That everything's been passed and we're still gotta read. Can't do a thing, nothing. I feel one of the major problems in this country. It was a bad thing when the PLP got in with that big majority. It's a bad, bad thing. Because people could do whatever they like. No. You see, so that situation needs to change. People need to pay attention, right? You can compare this um, situation to the same article that's in the paper with this guy, the businesses that complained about um, costumes, abuse of power. Audience. I, I, I guess my, I want to ask the audience, Maya, real quickly. And the law is the law. You know, if it states it, look, I, I, I'm a person who I'm okay with breaking the law if I don't agree with it. And I'm okay with the consequences that come with it. Let me just state that. I don't encourage others to do what I do, but that's where I'm at. But there will be consequences. But audience, the question is, Maya just said that if a parking lot has 10 or more spaces, then according to the law, 2018, it must have an EV charging station. No, I guess the simple question is, do you agree with that law audience? Do you agree with that law? No, my, in, in, in many spaces in the US now, at least down in South Florida, you'll go to parking lots and before the close spots, like closest to where, you know, wherever the steps or wherever was, they would be for the disabled parking. Now, after the disabled parking, there's actually the charging station. So they get preferential treatment, I guess, because they're helping the environment. I think there's, and I, I don't want to criticize Mr. Ferber or Mr. Chicken, because I understand his frustration. You've been running businesses for long before I was probably born, right? Mm -hmm. I think if, about 40 years. I think. Yeah, right. Like you, you've been doing this. And the hardest thing for anyone who's been doing something a certain way all the time is having to deal with the changes, whether they're good or not. I will say, I'm not sure if it's actually in law. I will just be in the correction that it says that the planning application under the Bermuda uh, Plan 2018. So it might just be the application itself, not exactly law. But I would have to confirm that for tomorrow. All right. Fair enough. What I would say is, I have a couple questions and I'll, I'll reach out to Marketplace. One, if he's the renter, why is he responsible for it? I mean, it's Marketplace who earn it. So I'll reach out to Marketplace for that. Two, 
and this is this may be a question that the audience is thinking to and you. What is the percentage of cars that require a charging station in Bermuda? Mm -hmm. Right? Where this is even necessary. And then three, I think you said something where they just can't give him a pass for this or something or whatever. But why can't there be an exception for the time being and give an extension? Say, you know what? Go ahead, open it. But we're, we'll give you 12 months. You got what I'm saying? Mm. I think it's already my issue is compromise. It's like, is there no way to compromise on this? I think it's already been about six months uh, till, you know, that has already kind of stretched out uh, with this issue for Mr. Ferbert as well. He also described that in his Somerset location, it was like over a year before he was able to open because of similar um, instances as well that he had faced uh, with uh, the department. And he did state in there that he had to have X amount of parking lots in for that specific location, but then now all the other businesses around him, they've been using his parking spaces. And he said he sent a video in and never heard back about anything because why did he have to provide all these parking spaces? No other business around had to provide all these parking spaces. And now people are, you know, parking in his lots to go to other businesses. And it's just become this really whole ordeal and saying that you never heard back from them on that instance as well. is just another thing in the all right, real quickly, Traveling Charlie and Shikarina said, no, they don't agree that he should have to have charging stations. Um, but Farrah Palacio had the same question as me, you know, um, he's renting, it's not even his building, and he has to deal with that. Like, that's that's a legit question, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and audience, I appreciate all your comments. Maya's got other stuff to um, go on, but I'll come back to your questions uh, and comments. But I just, this is puzzling to me, and it would frustrate me as an entrepreneur, whether yeah. I'm right or wrong. Yes. <laughs> Especially with this whole new initiative going green again, um, shouldn't it be the responsibility of the government or the department to put those things in if that's their initiative? But I digress. Um, in other news, the Chamber of Commerce budget breakfast had two wildly different perspectives. On one hand, the Premier, the Honorable David Byrd, spoke highly in regard to the budget and the good Bermuda is in. Likewise, um, or on the other hand, the Bermuda Chamber of Commerce applauded the government's achievement of presenting a balanced budget for the first time in nearly two decades and welcomed the decision not to impose new taxes on neither employers or employees. Or meanwhile, as heard from the persons in attendance and as well the CEO and president and Food Hub and Bermuda Medical Specialist uh, Group, Mariko Thomas, brought forth many statistics over two decades and more. And here are some of the stats that I would like to share with you guys. So first is just a video that you're gonna see, um, basically just listing out what the purpose of the video is to show you just the amount of like hotel beds and just spaces that have closed down in Bermuda um, over the span of 20 so years. So this is what you're gonna see now. As you notice here, it's just like a uh, continuous flow. And I think uh, the total was over 2000 like beds and heads that Bermuda has lost over the years. He's listing out and naming all the different like hotels or um, just places that people used to be able to come down to in Bermuda and you know, be able to sit at and or stay and spend the night. Here's an image of it. Again, apologize for how it looks. These are the things that were sent to me. Do I appreciate the person who did send them to me? But this is a photo. If you can look in as tight as you can to see just some of the names that have been closed on, a bunch of buildings that have been closed on throughout the years, just showing again just how much we have lost um, on this island. I think Mr. Thomas said something. I saw a report. We need not just focus on the good, we need to focus on where we come up short. Mm. And I think that's a problem that this government has in particular. Um, they, they love to focus on what they believe is good um, rather than where we're falling short. And I think that, that to me, it comes across as politics and, and it's, not, it's not good for Bermuda. Yeah, there's a uh, fuller, Sorry, there's a fuller um, story from Gary Foster Skeleton who was there and present at the event. I would encourage anyone to go see that. I believe it's on his LinkedIn. It was a good disclosure and some comments from Mr. Thomas as well. Now, meanwhile, in other news, primary school open houses will be held on February 20th, 21st, and 22nd, as well as there is now parents and guidance on courses submit fully online um, completed applications for you know primary school as well. 
registration. So these are just the locations that everyone can be familiar with them of the East Zone, Central Zones, and Western Zones. But yes, it is now time for you to apply, and the deadline to apply is actually March the 8th as well. So it's just something to consider for parents who have to do that registration for primary school. Hopefully we get some more updates on also just the transitions in education as well. I know I like to keep everyone updated on that. So that's something that we got to look forward to as well. well I was, I, I was going to ask Maya, but I said, I'm not going to do it, but I'm just like, nope, once the election's called or once they announce that an election will be called, that they're going to keep West End and all that, you know, so you know how it works. You know we will works. definitely hear some more updates, I'm sure, in the very <laughs> near future. Um, now, calling all students, though, and anyone who's trying to further their education, the Department of Workforce and Development is excited to announce the upcoming Quick Tips series for scholarship success webinar sessions. Participants will learn the key strategies and the best practices to enhance their application, implementing, improving their chances of success. Now, these virtual sessions will be held on February the 26th, 28th and March the 4th as well. And they have provided registration links. Uh, if you are interested and you want to be able to, you know, take part in these, you can get more information by calling the number that's provided right there on the screen, 2977714, or also emailing and putting in that um, headline, subject line, quick tip scholarship sessions. Now, I would definitely say if you're a student, anyone trying to further education, to take advantage of this because I can, I can attest to not knowing how to use that website when I was trying to get scholarships. Know if I used the website, I think it was before my time. <laughs> it was definitely valuable. Uh, and in your weather today, everyone, eh, still not the greatest. Bermuda's not looking good. Uh, overcast and occasionally wet, developing a chance of thunder actually today. And we got a high of 67, and we're going to get some strong gusts. And unfortunately, for today's news break, I don't have any sports dates for you. So that's all okay. I got. Well, we've got an Olympian in his house. So yes. maybe we'll get some sports there. But Maya, it's um, Tuesday the 20th. So here we got we've got muffin day we've got love your pet day we've got a uh, handcuff day um we've got like lego classicism day we've got cherry pie day we've got hoodie who day we've got no politics day well we failed that um we've got comfy day and we've got international pipe smoking day you know what i'm gonna pick what love your pet day yes of course <laughs> Uh, come here, Pella. Come here. Come here. Just love your pet. Hey, come here, girl. Come say hi to everybody. Come here. Sure. Come here. Is she come really going to come to you? Yes, she can. Come I'm, here. Say I'm hi actually to shocked. Everybody. Not the sweater. Hi to everybody. <laughs> say hi to everybody. No, no, don't, don't, don't do that. Say, speak, 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 Pella. You don't want to speak to everyone? All right. So, anyway, let's read uh, Love Your Pet Day. So, <laughs> Love your pet day pretty much is an interesting. No, you can't press buttons, Bella. Okay. Um, so it's interesting to learn that most households in the United States have at least one pet present, right? It goes to show that uh, you, you can't press buttons. I'm sorry. But anyway, you get the point. Love your pet. And the history of National Pet Day is uh, pets have been a part of human life for thousands of years and have only become more popular and common to earn one. So, uh, Maya. You want to know how to celebrate pet day? Um, buy something for your pet, show them that you love them, be there for them after work, be excited and happy to see them when you walk in that door, everything like that. Yeah, basically, um, take a walk with them, um, pay extra close attention to them, and um, you know, do all that fun stuff. So happy pet day. Audience, do you have a pet? Yes or no? Do you have a pet? What's your pet's name? <laughs> What's your pet's name? And what kind of pet do you have? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> no. You right. know you love her. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's nothing like a part-time pet. But, um, yeah, what, what, what's your pet's, pet's names? Let us know, folks. We've got uh, Suzanne Ingham. She says, oh, she's so cute. She's trying to type hi. Yeah, that's what she was trying to do. I just, just saw much <laughs> numbers. Maya, do you have a pet? No, not no. anymore. But, man, do I ever miss having a dog sometimes, man. But when oh. they have your heart, they have your heart. And it's so devastating when you lose them. Yeah, uh, Bella and I got along pretty well, you know. She hasn't, she's been in the second day in a row in the studio and she hasn't made one peep, one peep. And now she's trying to jump back up on the coach. But let us know, audience, do you have any pets? And um, got a pet, Jamal says, story time is Mrs. Great. I do, Bella is my pet, part-time. That's what I was about to say, she's not even part-time though. <laughs> 
is part time. You gotta work in uh, under hours. Kiara says she says I, she has an entitled Yorkie named Tokyo. So <laughs> all, basically, all Yorkies, Yorkers are like that. Then, okay? Of course. Yeah. Okay. Okay. They got their personality. But Bella, Bella doesn't like. Um, she doesn't know she's a dog, so she doesn't really like other animals. So yeah, she, she she has an issue. But I think when she goes to Noah's Ark, she gets she, she gets she's on her best behavior, right, Maya? <laughs> Yes, definitely. I picked out some really cute stuff for Christmas. All right. Yeah, she she had an awesome Christmas. Maya made me overspend one, but that's okay. Um, she loves me a bit more. Maya, we'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. I'm excited for this discussion. Talk soon. All right. All right. Uh, Suzanne Ingham says, I used to have a pit bull. I miss having my puppies. They were 60 years old. And Larry Marshall Jr. says, no pets around here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Bella and I have a part-time relationship. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. We're going to take a quick break. We're coming back with Peter Brumby, Bermuda Olympian. I wonder if he has any pets. We're going to ask him. It's pet day. If you don't have one, get something for someone else's pet. That's how I do it. Stick with us. Don't go anywhere. Let's face it. Life can be a little <laughs> wild. But shopping doesn't have to be. I choose people's so that whether it's a prescription that needs to be filled, a toy for my little terror, or a gift for a new addition to the family, um, we'll see about that. Everything's available in one convenient location. Some call it Peoples. I call it my one-stop shop in the city. Peoples, we're here for you. Welcome to the new bulk store, Lindo's Next Level. Wake up in the morning with enough coffee to keep you running throughout the entire day. Your pet at home deserves the best. Stock up on dog food to keep your puppy happy. Need a quick tasty lunch at home? Your chicken nuggets will be jumping right out of the freezer. What's a movie night without popcorn? You can never have too much. Lindo's Next Level. Why go anyplace else? All righty, welcome back to the big show. I'm Jamal Hartman. It's the Daily Hour brought to you by the DAC Group of Companies, Medical Wells, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy. Please do not forget to subscribe on our website. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. We have another dog in the audience. We've got Renee Simmons says, a schnauzer named Story. All right. Is it like a big schnauzer, a miniature schnauzer, or a standard schnauzer? See, I know my dogs. I just don't have one. Full time, full time. All right, let's bring in our guest for the day. Let's give a warm TDH welcome to another Bermuda Olympian. And folks, make sure, do me a favor before we bring our guest on. If you haven't already, whatever platform you're on, give us a like, a love, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you follow. And the biggest thing, make sure you share these conversations as we hope to ensure that these community conversations are in fact reaching all who, well, would love to be a part of these important conversations. Just looking at Bella over there. But let's give a warm TDH welcome to our guest for the day, Peter Bromby. Right, Good morning, sir. How are you? I'm doing fine, man. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I'm wonderful. First off, do you have a dog? Of course. Oh, I, really? Yeah. There you go. Well, that's, that's, that's Moose. Hey, Moose. What's me? Yeah. Well, Moose, I'm sorry. I would have let you meet Bella, but Bella doesn't. Well, she doesn't really <laughs> know how to act with other people. So, but what, nice to meet. What kind of dog is Moose? English Springer Spaniel. Okay. I got two actually. I got Alfie as well. He's another one. Another English Springer Spaniel. We love to hear it. We love to hear it. So, Lovely dogs. First off, thanks for doing this. Thanks for doing this. We appreciate you. Um. And let's just jump right into it. Tell us a bit about your background. And, and you're a, you were a sailor, one of Bermuda's top sailors. What got you into sailing? Well, kind of uh, when I was a kid, I got dragged around by my older siblings who sailed. And they took me out in a little sunfish sailboat. And that's where it all started. And so I learned that um, along the way um from them to begin with and then i started sailing on my own and i kind of learned on the race course to be quite honest when i first started i used to finish last in every race and there was the guy that used to finish last before i came along that i had a target on his back and tried to beat him and after and time i beat him and by the time i was 13 i was club champion so all righty see your lessons came from um not victory 
but in loss, right? They, they always say so many uh, lessons can come in what we deem failure, but failure could actually bring us to that place of success. So awesome how you got involved. But as a sailor, um, you know, we, we had a very big event in Bermuda in 2017. What did having a huge event like the America's Cup mean for Bermuda and Bermudians? Because out of that, you have the Endeavor program and hopefully more people getting into sailing, right? Sure. Yes. And, um, you know, for me, it was uh, it was um, it was a personal thing, too, because a lot of the people that were now in senior positions in the America's Cup teams were people that I had been racing on the Olympic circuit with for almost 20 years. So it was it was great. I always wondered how I would get a lot of my buddies to come come and visit me because we didn't have a fleet of the boats I raced in the Olympics here in the island. So the America's Cup, all of a sudden, all, some of my best friends were coming to Bermuda to live. Not only And not only were they coming, they were pretty much in the Somerset area, which is where I live. And uh, so it was, it was fantastic to have these guys. My whole neighborhood was full of some of my closest friends from all over the world. So interesting and and that's a great thing you know i mean um wow it came almost full circle for you but uh, let's talk about the olympics a bit um we've had people mainly track people on so far um in the past we've had dame flora and the like but you were a sailor what you know we, we've heard about what goes into uh preparation for people who do track but what goes into the training for yourself um as a sailor for the olympics what went into it Yes, well, um, a lot of early starts. Um, you went to the gym mornings. Um, I trained at the Olympic Club in town. So from Somerset, that was a 5.30 start. That picture that you got on there now was kind of after my Olympic career. So I'm not looking too, too uh, trim in that. But during the Olympics, uh, we trained every day physically um, in the gym. And then uh, also you spent a lot of time going to uh make your your boat go faster and you, there was a lot of technical stuff that we spent a lot of time working on our our boat speed mm -hmm. and then in addition to that there was boat handling that because we didn't have a fleet of boats here in bermuda to race against this particular boat you see in this picture is the boat that i raced in the olympics the the star and we had no fleet of them nobody to race against here so we worked primarily with our boat in Bermuda on our boat handling. So by the time we got to regatta sites, we went to the regattas and we usually got there a number of days early and we worked on our boat speed. So we did our boat speed training overseas, usually with foreign uh, teams, mm -hmm. but we did our boat handling right here in, in Bermuda in the Great Sound. So. That's interesting because I know so many people in different spaces um, do a, like that make it to the Olympics actually do a lot of their training overseas. So to know that you've done so much in Bermuda is very interesting. Um, and I, I have to ask this. Uh, I mean, do you feel like if you would have had more competition locally and, you know, or been overseas regularly to train against other elites, you could have, you know, progressed even more? Um, no, not really. And um, the truth of the matter is I was the beneficiary of, a pot of kids that grew up in my little club in Somerset that were all very competitive. And I benefited from it immensely from having um, some young kids that were fiercely competitive. And if you look at any of those kids that come out of, came out of that pod that I was in, the truth of the matter is they can all jump in a sailboat even now, 40 years later, and they have a big impact on the race that they're in even today. They, it was a fantastic group. So I just happened to, to be one of the few that, that stuck with it and, and didn't put my career first and I, I put sailing first. And uh, so, but there were, you know, guys like uh, Paul Fisher and Martin Cease. Martin Cease, every time he gets in a sailboat, um, you know, he has a big impact on the race, whoever he's sailing with. And that's that was the type of, of uh, group that I grew up in. And I was lucky. All right. Audience, if you have any questions for Mr. Brumby, please send them through. We'll get through as many as possible. Um, let's talk about your Olympics. You competed in four Olympic games um, starting in 92, Barcelona, in 96, Atlanta, in 2000, Sydney, and 2004, Athens. Um, how did 
you see the Olympics evolve during your time? Yeah, that's an interesting question because it did. It, it evolved just like you're saying a lot. When I first went to Barcelona, there wasn't um, quotas on the number of athletes. The Olympics was growing. It was becoming so large that providing you satisfied your local uh, qualification standard, your local Olympic association could send you. But by the time we got to the next Olympics in, in Atlanta, you had to qualify and they, and they had strict quotas in terms of the numbers that they would allow. So typically in the type of boats that I raced, there were about 45 countries where these boats were raced and they were all fighting over 16 spots. So simply to make it to the Olympics was a feat in itself. So little Bermuda was punching well above its weight just to get there in the first place. Interesting. Um, at my Palacio has a question. Uh, from the audience, are you involved in the training of our current Olympic uh, qualifier, um, Adriana Podrodic, uh, Podorak, uh for sailing? Uh, that's Adriana Penrodic. No, I'm not. Um, to be quite honest, I'm I'm retired now. I was once asked to to get involved with the youth. I put up my hand for a job and got turned down. So, uh, um, I have trained kids in the past. Um, particularly out of my little club, but you know, it's, they, they have a, a coach from overseas that comes in here and typically it's almost better that you don't get an appointed coach and that each team takes the person they want. You know, the person that's going to be best for Adriana is somebody that knows the boat that she sails. Um, and so you know, that was one of the benefits of Little Bermuda. If I would have been in Great Britain, I would have been forced to use the coach that Great Britain provided as a as a federation. But here in Bermuda, our federation didn't know who to provide, so they allowed me to provide my own coach. And uh, um, and to be quite honest, one of my best coaches was a Bermudian, and my my friend Martin Cease that I mentioned earlier. So uh, and and we. Uh, we had a lot of different coaches over the time, um, over the span, our, our career span 22 years. So we had some of the top coaching in the world as well. All right. Another question from my Palacio. How were you perceived by other athletes coming in as a Bermudian to the Olympics? Because you, you know, said little old Bermuda and, you know, punching above our weight. How did other athletes see you? Yeah, I, I think at first, uh, they didn't know. They expected us. Typically, the sailors coming out of the little islands weren't um, at the world class level, and so they. I think they kind of expected that of us. Um, but as time went on, we, we we. I'll give you an example. We did a regatta down in Miami every year called the Bacardi Cup, and when I first went to that regatta, I was forty second on my first year, and the next year I was twenty seventh. The next year I was in the 19th, I think. And by the time I'd been to 10 of them, I'd finished second. And I was looking at going back to try and win this thing. This is an event that has 120 boats on the starting line at one time. And but. All right. I think we lost you for a second, but. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. How's that? Are my back now? Yeah, you're back, sir. You're back. All right, sorry. Yeah, so so uh, they they perceived Bermuda as as whilst we had a bit of a sailing heritage, I'm not so sure they expected in this day and age to have as strong a competitor as as we were. Lee and I were world class. We, to be quite honest, we were unlucky at the Olympics. We we did better. Um, at world championships, we finished in the top six at the world championship uh, on six occasions. Um, we made the podium once um, in third. We were ranked number two in the world um, 2002-2003, and that was a combination of Lee and also there was a time when Martin C. sailed with me as well. But we were we were ranked number two in the world off of less events than the guys that were number one. That, that's impressive. And as I go to the, look at the comments, um, Charles H. Jeff II, you know, regarding the Olympics, only 16 boats. Well, that is an accomplishment. Uh, congratulations to Mr. Bromby and Bermuda. Um, Thank you. 
you know, looking back, I mean, the Olympics is so many athletes. It's, it's, it's a dream, you know, it's, it never becomes reality. Uh, when you look back at your time, what what's some highlights of the experience? Like what, when you think back and say, man, I really did this, but I really, you know, actually Maya acts it in a better way. You know, what is uh, your favorite Olympic memory? Like what, what stands out to you about your Olympic experience? Probably without out of doubt, um, uh, Sydney, Australia, where we finished fourth, that was our best Olympics. But more importantly, we were very much in, in uh, contention for a medal throughout the entire event. We got a little unlucky in that we were run into by uh, one of our fellow competitors who basically did a professional foul, not, not unlike in football where a guy's got a breakaway and they drag you down. Well, we were breaking away right at the starting line and uh, and the two guys that we had put in trouble basically um, did a professional foul, ran into us, and we weren't able to complete the race because we tore our mainsail, and that ultimately cost us a spot on the podium. Um, had we have executed our game plan in that race, which we should have been able to, we would have gone into the last race fighting over uh, which medal we were going to get, not if we were going to get one. Instead, we came out of it um, eliminated mathematically and could only fight for four spot, which we did and did it well. I don't know why that just made me so angry. <laughs> that, that, that made me angry just now, but hey. Well, it, it's it's sailboat racing. And, and like I said, for me, you know, we get a lot of satisfaction, myself and my team members, knowing that we didn't just go there to make up the numbers. We were very competitive and uh and and with that comes a lot of self satisfaction, you know. Indeed. And and speaking of that, not just going to make up the numbers. Um, in the last Olympics, um, Tokyo, which obviously took place in 2021 rather than 2020 because of the uh, pandemic, um, now they implore Duffy. Uh, she brought home Bermuda's first gold. What do you think um, this means for Bermuda? That, that was fantastic to, to watch. Um, I followed her career quite closely as a, as a fellow Olympian. In fact, I actually went to Beijing um, for the pre-Olympics, which she attended. That was one of her first arrivals on the Olympic scene, I think. And, uh, and you know, she had fought along the same thing. She'd been up against a lot of uh, adversity in her early Olympics and, I think everybody wanted to see her do well. We'd seen her win world championships. We wanted to see her do well. And during the games itself, I remember the night that she won. We were watching the television, and I'm thinking, man, she's going to win this, you know. And then there was a girl that got a flat tire in the last 100 yards or a couple hundred yards coming into the transition to the run. And uh, she was a fairly big girl. And... Uh, Floor had taken off out of the transition in the lead, and, and they were focusing on this other girl's running, and she overhauled. She was fourth out of the transition, and she overhauled to second. And I'm thinking, man, is this girl going to catch Floor? And they were focusing so much on her overtaking second uh, or third and second that I didn't. it wasn't until they showed the split time of the first uh, loop that that Flora had actually ran faster. So she had widened the gap on this girl. So at that point, I'm thinking to myself, man, she's going to win this thing. And uh, that was such a proud moment for, for all of Bermuda, but particularly as a fellow Olympic athlete, it kind of still, still make, chokes me up a bit. Yeah, indeed, indeed. A very special moment. Um, we've got the 2024 Paris Olympics coming up this summer. Um, again, my first Olympics, I say it all the time, that I remember was 1992 um, because I was such I was such a basketball fan. So the dream team really got me yeah. into the Olympics. So Barcelona 92, I was happy to um, actually visit Barcelona years later to um, see the Olympic Stadium, which I believe Espanyol used and just the historic um, uh, city of Barcelona. But that said, Paris Olympics coming up, um, we obviously have people who are still trying to qualify. What advice would you give to aspiring Olympians who are looking to qualify, not just for these Olympics, but future Olympics as well? Yeah, they have to have a mental toughness about them. Um, I, I got to admit, there were times along my career when I thought, man, I, I almost gave up. You know, sometimes you would go out and you would be sure you were going to improve and you were going to do well. 
And then all of a sudden you went backwards and, uh, you know, and sometimes it's one step backwards to, for two steps forward. And, uh, and so it can be an emotional roller coaster. And so when you're trying out and you're trying to qualify, you'd have to be a really mentally strong to, to stick with it. Um, and, and that would be my advice was to, to understand and expect it to be emotionally, uh, tough, but you just, that you need to be emotional, uh, emotionally tough to survive. So. Indeed. Mr. Brumby, thank you so much for, um, having this conversation with us, join us. Moose, happy, uh, pet day to you, Moose. Yeah, you I, go, Moosey. I, I hope you got a treat, Moosey. I hope you got yeah. a treat. <laughs> you were a good pup. You and Bella didn't even bark or make any noise, but Mr. Brumby, thank you so much. And congratulations on your accomplishments, uh, setting the standard uh, for people like Dan Flora and those coming behind her. Um, it's, it's been a privilege to have this conversation with you, and I wish good. you all the best going forward. Sure, thank you. And, and I just want to say, you know, a lot of the time you hear my name out there, but I had some fantastic crew members, team members throughout my sailing career. And more importantly, my, my uh, wife at home, you know, through the whole time when I was trotting around the world racing sailboats, she was holding the running her business, helping run my business um, when I was gone. So, you know, none of that could have happened without the support. Of, of family and great team members. So. Indeed, it's definitely, oh, again, even in sports that doesn't look like it's a team sport, there's definitely a team behind the individual, especially when they reach certain heights. So Very much so. Thank you for that. And you have a wonderful day. You'll definitely be in touch. Okay, thank you. All right, Peter Brumby, former Bermuda Olympian. If you appreciate it, that conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like. Make sure you share these conversations with your friends, your family, your colleagues. Karen Simmons says, thank you, Mr. Brumby, and your team for the conversation. Congratulations on the sale accomplishments. Uh, we've got Burmy Girl says, congratulations to our Olympians and Paralympians. Indeed, um, I agree, Maya. Rank number two is crazy. Congrats. I mean, we Bermuda really does punch above his weight. We we do it. We do it. And she says, uh, love this chat. Uh, crazy, impressive stats. We're going to take a final break. Don't go anywhere because someone's going to be eligible for a prize. And you, if you don't know that you should have listened to the conversation because the answer is in the conversation with Mr. Brumby. That's the daily play question is in the conversation with Mr. Brumby. Someone's going to be eligible after this break. Do not go anywhere. It's not a trick question. Hi there. Welcome to Matacool House. We're located at number six Bakery Lane. I can't wait to show you all of the great stuff that we carry. Come on inside. Let's see. Let's kick it off in the footwear department. When it comes to footwear, we carry functional, comfortable, orthopedic, and waterproof shoes. We have construction shoes, golf shoes, shoes for walking, shoes for boating. We even have shoes for pickleball. We have shoes for everyone. With brands by Skechers, Atrax, Propay, Easy Street, Nursemates, Clogs, Avenger, Cherokee, Cat, Frog Talks, and DeWalt. The list goes on. Take a look at our workwear for construction workers and tradesmen. Durable, stretchable in all the right places and plenty of options for tools and accessories. Here with our wide range of tough and comfortable footwear, you can't go wrong. Long days, long shifts, you no longer have to endure comfortable underwear. Designed by Narciss, we now offer premium undergarments by Swoop that are unique, fun, comfortable and functional. The only underwear you'll ever want to wear, who says high quality functional products can be stylish and comfortable at the same time? Speaking of stylish, we also have top quality running, walking and workout apparel by Skechers in a variety of sizes for men and women. Cool, breathable and dry. With our wide selection of Skechers footwear, you'll look great before, during and after your workout. As you can see, Medical House really is a one-stop shop for everybody. We can't wait to see you. You'll be surprised at everything we have to offer at our huge new retail and wholesale location on Bakery Lane. All right. Welcome back. Thanks again to Peter Brumby. Again, folks, if you appreciated that conversation, please give us a thumbs up, a love, a like, whatever platform you're on. Please make sure you share it with your friends, your family, your colleagues. We want to make sure these conversations reach everyone who's interested in helping our community uh, become better. So uh, do your part.
Uh, thanks again to the BAC Group of Companies, Medical House Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. It is time for the Daily Play brought to you by Bermuda Trivia, now available at stores throughout Bermuda. Follow Bermuda Trivia on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to find out why it's Bermuda's favorite trivia game. All right, here you go. It's a remember when. Please tell me you all were tuned in, watching, and listening just now. Remember when. Bermudian Olympian Peter Bromby participated in his first Olympics in what year, city, country? I clearly said, what year, city, country? NTS, you're in the draw. 1992 is the year. Barcelona is the city. Spain is the country. Charles, don't, don't try to correct it now, Charles. Don't, you were trying to be fast. You were trying to be fast, Charles. You were like me. Teacher asked you for the full answer, and you just put the answer. You didn't do the working. You did not do the working. All right, NTS, congratulations. 92 was correct. New Zealand was not Suzanne England. NTS is eligible. He goes into the draw. And wrap this up so I can send you all on your day. But re really quickly, regarding um, small businesses and the challenges that they have, I, I think that I'm a firm believer that entrepreneurship is the way to go for uh, many of us. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but our jobs will not exist forever. We need to find a way to self-sustain and entrepreneurship may give each and every one of us the opportunity to do that. Regarding our Olympians, in particular, Peter Bromby this morning, I'm not quite sure we as a country appreciate what we accomplish beyond Bermuda, whether it's in sport, in business, just life. There are so many incredible Bermudians doing things beyond the shores of Bermuda. And there are so many people accomplishing things and setting a way for others. As long as this show exists, we're going to continue having conversations with them to ensure that we are inspired to keep going and believe that there are no limits because of our size. Charles says, you didn't say in that order regarding the question you must be planning. Well, I did say it in that order. I said, year, city, country. You only put city, Charles. You didn't put the others. But um, <laughs> why is he such a troublemaker? Um, folks, don't forget to subscribe on our website, thedailyhour.com. You do not want to miss out on some other fun things that we have coming up. You already missed out, didn't get that email the other day. Don't miss out on more. Follow us on all of our social media channels to stay up to date with all that we have going on. Help us grow beyond the mic as we do our part to continue to improve our community. Thanks again to our partners, the BAC Group of Companies, Medical Oils, Lindos, and People's Pharmacy for ensuring that we're able to do this with you on a daily basis. As always, we appreciate you, we love you, and we thank you for making this part of your daily routine. If all goes well, we'll be back to do this again with you tomorrow. I'm Jamal Hartman. Please do make it a safe and a great day. I am is out. Peace.